All right, we're gonna get back to work on this orange feller because we have not made much progress and that has to change. He needs this tractor and we gotta get to it. So that's what we'll do right after this. Welcome back. If you haven't seen my videos before, I'm Ross the Oliver Man. This here is 200 Alice Chalmers of a customer's. We got leaks to fix and stuff, but our biggest issue is it's got a blown uh, remote hose on the back, so we got to fix that. And that is not an easy task, as we decided last time. And the route I'm going to go is the route that we usually went at the shop, which is to jack up the platform in the back. It will tilt up. I got the four bolts loose under the seat. That's what you have to do. I refreshed my memory on this by discussing it with them because I couldn't remember all the tricks. But I got those four out and also we got to take the hand clutch linkage loose out of the side of the tractor because it actually uh, pivots in the transmission case there or whatever have and if you lift it up you could bend it or whatever so we don't want that. So. We'll pull that loose. We'll jack it up. We may have to I can't remember I think on dad's I ended up pulling these brackets Bolts out so I could drop the valve down a little bit to get the steel lines off of there We'll pull them out the back and then we are going to try to uh, We'll see how they're made, but I'm leaning towards maybe getting compression fittings and compressing You know a line onto the steel line. I think that'll look cleaner and it'll take up less space, like right under here where everything's crowded, than four hoses would. We'll just see what we get into, but we gotta start under here, so that's what we'll do. Okay, well, we managed to kick one of our sockets already far, far away. But we're gonna take this loose here, one of those two pins anyway, so we can get that off of there. And then, I don't remember. Is a pin here you could pull out and slide it all this away. But I don't remember if we have to take these loose to get it to. I don't remember. We'll see. That's a weird angle, but that's the best I can give you. Because of the way that it is. And I should have brought a better pliers than this vice grip, but. I just didn't. I thought that I had more stuff laying here, but it'll work. We'll figure it out. I think we might also have to clean up one of our magnetic trays and go get that. I have them and I use them, but they just get full. And I have dozens of them just sitting full of hardware and fasteners. Silly. Foolish is what it is. All right, that's loose now. Probably wouldn't be better if I shifted it so that it's out of there. How's that look? That make it more better? This is the high-low valve, and it just sends hydraulic pressure in there to lock up those clutch packs. Now, we're going to start by trying to take this out and see what kind of luck we have with that. Mmm. success okay we're gonna take this e-ring off Alice liked e-rings and I just I've never been a fan of e-rings but to each his own I 
If you don't know what that is in a minute, I'll show it to you, but... I might show it to you when I throw something up against the wall. Because I'm not getting it out of there. There's a... And I'm right against the tire, so I can't... Oh, there we go. Ouch! God dang it! Oh. Poked a hole in my head, but... Here is the E-ring, or E-clip, as it may be. Just snapped in a groove in a shaft. I never really was a fan of them because they can pop out of there, but... And they're kind of a pain to put back in, but... Sometimes, depending on what you're doing. Now, will this pull through there, or are we going to have more troubles? Like this one not sliding on the shaft. That's the troubles we're going to have. There. Just got a manhandler a little bit. So that is hanging loose. It is no longer connected. So we should be good there. Now, part of me wants to say that we should try to get those lines loose right now before we do anything. And then what we will probably end up doing, I think like I had to do on Dad's, is there's two 3 8 volts up there, and there's only one here. Somebody's left out one, I guess. I don't really know why. That's easy to get to, but stuff happens. So... Uh, if I can get those lines broke loose first, you know, just at least break them loose, then we can drop the valve down later and get it all pulled out of there. Because I'm thinking, if I remember correctly, it was kind of a problem to get that out of there if you didn't do it that way. Which then, you know, you'd say, well, you don't really have to take that loose. Well... Maybe not, but it's just a good idea to, so you don't bend anything. Worried about it. Oh, tired ready, and it's only like 10 o'clock. <laughs> okay. It's all about the motivation. You just got to finally do it, and that's where we're at right now. So, yeah, I'll go get the offset wrenches, I believe, and probably... What else do we need? I got the handyman jack. We're going to try that to see if it'll lift the platform up. Might need a block of wood or something. Sure. Oh, I know another thing we need to do. Oh. I know another thing we need to do first, or we wouldn't have to do it now, but we will. And that is take the remote coupler brackets loose so that it's easy to deal with when we get that far. This thing has custom job done because he replaced the originals with these 9400 series couplers which are super easy to couple uh, that's one thing i did not like about these tractors compared to my green ones the couplers they originally had on here were pioneer couplers but they were like one way and you had it had a lever sticking out and you had to like squeeze your hand you could pull the lever and it would pull the coupler out and then you could push in your end and then you let go of that thing and it all goes back together that's very difficult compared to these which are two-way couplers i got my halloween decorations up here by the way if you couldn't see those spider webs the thing i like about these is they're two-way couplers under pressure you take the thing and you just shove it in and you're done no other opposite motion required if you think about that you're pushing even though these tractors do operate with some back pressure and people say it makes it so difficult to couple if you got these style couplers you push in and then you let go and you're done whereas some of these other makes of tractors not just them but other people did it too you have to pull out with one hand while you're trying to push in your hose and you're fighting yourself you're you're working you're trying to muscle 
two different ways at the same time whereas those you're just using all your force to shove it in there and go so i like those a lot and i don't know i've got a couple well i've got some of these these are the factory stock couplers unlike the 9650 they just painted them black but they're the same exact thing and these do work super easy but you know those work fine for me too i've never had any issue with those on anything these are the same as those but they take it one step further those are 8250s these are 9400s or whatever where you have this relief lever that takes the pressure off then you shove it in then you turn the pressure on what have you but uh yeah i've never had any issue with those i like these too but you know whatever enough blabbing i'm thinking Ooh, what do we got back there got a spring what do we have back there we don't need all that this one's just got a regular three-eighths job we may modify this all slightly by the time we're done because that seems like a lot of extra work there Although, it may be easier to just take them out here right now and then uh, deal with the bracketry later when we go back together. So, yeah. I guess that's what we'll do. We'll take these two loose so that we can just drop the whole assembly down. <laughs> it's got that spring on it. I'll have to ask him if there's a reason that we did that. Or if it would just be better to make them the same. I don't know. Whatever. We'll figure it out. I don't want to change something that somebody did purposely because they like it. You know what I mean? But I would not do it this way because both sides are different. However, maybe he purposely made it that way so that this one stuck back farther than that one. I don't know. That's the kind of stuff you just don't know unless you ask. This isn't even tight, really. Neither one was tight. I'm opting for this was hastily made, but I might be wrong on that. There we go. You know, they had to... Okay, sure. I like the solidness of this bracket. The spring thing, I don't know if that's necessary, but I'm sure it has a purpose. I'm just wondering why we didn't do it on both sides. That's what, I'm not insulting whoever did whatever. I'm just saying I'm confused at why we didn't follow suit if we did something on purpose, why both sides aren't made the same way. But they could have been done at two totally different times, too. And this side's going to be the one that I don't have. I think I'm going to have to buy different GoPro batteries, too, because this one that's in there now was at 100%, I believe. And now it's down to like 30% in a short order. So that's no good. Maybe it's the battery I had in it yesterday, but I thought it was a fully charged one. Boy, those hoses are rotten. Those are the original hoses, I'd say. Well, they'd have to be because the steel lines are still on there. And I'm pretty sure they're made as one. All right. And you're going to say, why can't you just pull them out there like that? Well, you just don't quite have enough room. It just, you just don't. So, you'll see that after a while. I'm also trying to be mindful of his paint. I don't want to stick the camera to nice paint. I need to get that tripod from 
viewer David, who brought me the 1450, he also brought me a tripod, but uh, it doesn't have, I need to get an adapter to hook my camera directly to it, and old habits, I'm just not used to it, see, yeah, this is going to need, we don't have a lot of jacking left here. I'm gonna block and we'll test run. If there's anything safe about a handyman jack, it's also using it on a block because that just increases the safety. I think if I go like this, that would be the more precarious way to do it. See? And that is what we like with a handyman jack. We don't want pure safety. We want somewhat of cobble. Ooh. She's a popping and a cracking. Crump, crackle, pop, motherfucker. Hopefully, everything is disconnected. I'm going to say that that's probably the maximum amount of travel right there what we just did. I'm also going to say that I remembered something else I should have disconnected probably. Draft control linkage maybe. That's much more better. There's a draft control rod that is bolted on one end in a pivot. The thing's bolted to the brake housing and the one that goes straight up to this you cannot uh, it just doesn't have enough play to do what you want to do here. So. Yeah, see, that's a lot better. Now we're ready for that. Yeah. There we go. See how much we came up? We came up a good eight inches or so. And now you can get back here to everything. And yes, you can see that these lines are indeed crimped onto those steel lines. They're banded together with hose clamps. But I don't think they are uh, attached to the platform. I don't think that they did come up with it. But that's because of the steel lines back there onto the valve. Yeah, see everything's loose. So, we're going to wedge a block under here though too, because I also don't want to lose my arm if this should fall off of our very super reliably safe handyman jack that's barely on there at all. And the nice thing is they are crimped together with hose clamp or clipped, not crimped, but you know what I mean. They're banded together with hose clamps, so we should be able to pull it out as a big wad of lines once we get them loose up there. This line, which I don't know why, the three-point cylinder line, they did make it where it was serviceable. And I don't know why they didn't do that with the others. We're going to go ahead and replace these lines as well. Because they just, it's time, you know, I think. They've been on here since the tractor's painted. The tractor's been painted for a good number of years now. So at the very least, they're probably six to ten years old and they're probably older than that. So... We're gonna do that too. Uh, yeah, but you can see those two bolts hanging. You can't get them pulled out of there, but you can get them loose and then pull it up out. You know, you get what I'm saying. You can also see the arrangement of fuel lines. The Alice had, it sucks the fuel from that side, but it's got a crossover line to this side of the tank so that it empties from both sides of the tank, I guess, and then your return line comes up there. I, I don't know what arrangement of baffles is in the tank, but I'm pretty sure that's why it has a pull from each side. But uh, anyway, and then that's also your fuel shutoff valve. His is dripping, not a lot, but had a drop on it. So, but it doesn't look like it's leaking. So we'll just leave that be for now. These are kind of a bear when you had to take them out of there uh, with the platform down, you know. But yeah, it's time to get the lines out. 
So it's offset wrench time. And uh, what else was I going to do? Oh, yeah, block, wedge a block, 4x4 under there. So if it falls, I don't cut off my hand because it would be better to try to keep all my limbs intact anyway, if possible. You know, stuff happens and that's life. We got to deal with it. But if I can prevent causing injury to myself from something that was stupidity, I would rather do that, you know. I know better, is what I'm saying. Some people have accidents and you just can't help it, but this is preventable. I know what I need to do, so I'm gonna hunt up a block and do that thing. Get the offset wrenches, work under there, and we should be able to, to get them pulled out. All right, just so you see, I do use the magnetic trays. There they are. Now, yeah, see how far off that hand clutch linkage is now from where it lived? That's pretty far, so, yeah. Okay, well, I should have put that block under there to start with, so I need to go do that real quick. Like I said, if I left that part in. Preventable accidents. Okay, what do you figure that is up there? probably a it's seven eighths okay i would have guessed that first but come on okay there's one now can we get this one away? we're running out of choices here wild and woolly but we got it in there now the back two I'm not sure how we got those loose before again I I'm pretty sure that I gotta take the brackets loose and drop the valve down so I have room to work uh, I might be wrong maybe I could take up this floor panel but I don't think that's really going to gain me a lot, am I? I still need the clearance to pull the line up off of there, so... I guess we'll do that. Fun times, Orange Acres. I'm having a heck of a time here. There. What is happening here? I see what's happening here. This one is made in such a way that a guy can't get... on it because there is another bolt screwed down into the floor so we gotta take that loose to get the socket on it taking stuff loose so we got room to take more stuff loose that's always my favorite game yep like i've said before this is one of those examples where the orange people are probably like hey, you know how to do that but i'm pretty sure it made it a lot easier last time I did it this way. One more on this other side. Because somebody didn't put all the bolts back in. And then we should be getting out. Oh. Didn't that come off of there? Yes. Good. Now, I just got a hold of it. Sure. Now, that helped us a little. Gave us some wiggle room anyway yeah now back to whatever it is we were doing before we're probably going to end up taking that floor panel loose anyway just to see what we're doing probably would help all right i'm trying not to take more loose than i have to but i think that this will save me some Trouble. See, this wasn't even in the original plan. We were just going to work on the motor, but then in the meantime, it blew this hydraulic line. So that changed our plans. 
got to add to our work, but that's fine. It really needs to be fixed before he's going to use it every day in the winter. All right, shoddy. Yes. Now we can get to the top. And we have our wiggle room by taking that bracket down that we can get the stuff off of there. Let's see if we can't get that broke loose as well. Or not. Or not. Okay, well, I should have known that something was going to give us a run for our money, and it's going to be fitting us. So I'm going to take these two loose and see about holding them out of the way so that I can get a full pull, full pull on our back ones. You know, I wish when they made this, they had mounted this another four inches lower, and you wouldn't have to take that bracket loose. And I wish they had moved it forward about three to four inches, and then it would have been right in this hole where you could work totally without taking anything else loose. And you could have just jacked up the platform. Well, and if they would have made the lines break in a different place, you wouldn't have had to do that. All of this stuff, <clears throat> could have been made more user friendly and it wouldn't have cost them really anything else and it wouldn't have made any performance difference to the machine it would have just been that much more better they could have even left that hand clutch linkage where it was and just mounted the valve different and it would have made a big difference Somebody wasn't thinking that day. Somebody was probably mad at his wife that day. He went into work. And he was like, you know what I'm going to do today? Screw a mechanic. We may be having to get a different wrench that has a little more, a little more uh, meat in its britches. Because I don't think I'm going to get them with this one. That one I did. It's just going to be that one. There's always one. Always one. That one's going to come right loose like it should. And this other one's going to fight me to the death. Okay, we had a slight meltdown, but we're fine. We just have to get this loose. And I'm thinking about just shutting the camera off because I don't think that this is going to go well. Like I said, this one's going to come right loose. That ain't a problem. It's that other fella. It's gonna play a game of We Hate Ross. That's not my favorite game. But a lot of this equipment seems to like to play that game. That one's loose, okay. Three out of four. I think I got it. I might have. Oh.
Yeah, we'll do that. Jeez. All right, I got those out of there. Had to do a few things I wasn't proud of, but hey. I'm gonna take these all apart and make sure that we're not just kicking ourselves in the shin. I don't know, they're kind of crusty. A guy might as well, like that's pretty thin. I doubt they make them new, I'll look it up, but I'm thinking probably be better to just go ahead and make hoses all the way because that sure, uh, I don't know. I just feel like these are gonna fail. I don't think, I don't know. I'll get a second opinion from my people, but yeah, I don't think it's gonna gain us anything to do something goofy. I think just making a bunch of hoses, this is what I did on dad's, and we'll make them in such a way that we can eliminate his adapters so we don't have to have extra uh, nonsense, you know? Unless for some reason they make them new, then I'll probably buy new ones, but I doubt they do. And if they do, they're probably super duper expensive. So anytime there's a metal tube made to a hose, it's usually pricey. But I think we're gonna call that the end of this episode, because that was a lot of, a lot of time. I don't know how much I'll make it into the video, but we at least made some progress. When we knock that end out, then our big deal is going to be just leaks on the motor. I got all the stuff, so that shouldn't take us too awfully long, but every time I say that, something terrible happens, so I'm not going to say that. It's probably going to take us hours and hours and hours, and we'll probably regret our life and lay down in the highway. So if I say that, maybe it'll go smoothly, see? So... That's where we'll leave it. As always, if you like the videos, leave them, leave a thumbs up and leave a comment. Tell me what you like to see. Tell me your experiences about dealing with one of these. Tell me that you can't stand me and the sound of my voice gives you the runs. That's fine. Any of that is helpful to the channel because, yeah, mathematicals, algorithms, whatever. I don't understand how it works. But as always, thank you for watching. And I'll see you in the next one.